After all, who else more uh, exemplifies egotism, ambition, arrogance, compassion, vision, and revolution than Caesar? His name sums up all those things. A brilliant and ambitious war general and statesman, he was confronted with a difficult choice. Resign his command or be declared enemy of the state. His bold decision that followed instigated a bloody civil war. The resulting empire that rose from the ashes would become one of the greatest, largest, and most influential realms in all of history, leaving a lasting effect on modern art, architecture, science, language, government, law, and so much more. Julius Caesar Crossing the Rubicon Gaius Julius Caesar was born on July 12, 100 BC, in Sabura, Italy. An ambitious child of a minor noble family, he sought to achieve political power. At an early age, he demonstrated his cleverness and boldness. After being kidnapped by pirates, he raised a naval force, captured his captors, and had them all crucified, despite his lack of public office. Later on, Caesar was elected consul in 59 BC, and he allied himself with the great general Pompey and a rich politician Crassus to form the first triumvirate. Early in 59 BC, Pompey firmly sealed the secret alliance by marrying Caesar's daughter, Julia. In 58 BC, Caesar used his influence to secure a command in the Alps, which gave him years of freedom and 20,000 men to command. Between 58 and 50 BC, Caesar led a brilliant, effective conquest and subjugation of Gaul, considered at the time one of the most fearsome territories. His campaign spread through modern-day France, Germany, and even across the English Channel. Meanwhile, the triumvirate was under immense stress. Pompey was becoming uneasy about Caesar's rising popularity and success, and Crassus's old resentment towards Pompey was resurfacing. The alliance was temporarily patched up during a conference in Lucca in 56 BC. However, the marriage link between Caesar and Pompey was broken by Julius' death in 54 BC, and in 53 BC, Crassus was killed in a disastrous campaign against the Parthian Empire. With Crassus gone and Caesar's long absence in Gaul, Pompey became the sole consul of the Roman Senate. Pompey, with rising jealousy and fear, ordered Caesar to disband his army and return to Rome where he would lose his consulship and be put on trial for treason and war crimes following his unlicensed conquest. Caesar, known for being a proud and zealous general, would not bow to the commands of the weakening Roman Senate. Although it was illegal to cross into Roman territory with an army, Caesar intended to incite a civil war. So on January 10th, 49 BC, Caesar, from his residence in Ravenna, sent forward some cohorts to wait at the bank of a small river known as the Rubicon. The Rubicon marked the boundary between Cisalpine Gaul and Italy. To avoid suspicion, Caesar attended public games, examined the model of a school he was planning to build, and sat down with a large company of friends. However, after sunset, Caesar began his journey to the Rubicon as privately as possible bringing with him a single Roman legion. He said that he pondered his choice for some time, but with the support of his army, he shouted, Alea Yacta Est, Latin for the die is cast. Caesar crossed the river with his army, officially beginning a four-year civil war. And so Caesar did not hesitate in January of 49 BC to ignore the Senate and to cross into the boundary between northern Italy, with the Rome, which the Romans thought of as Cisalpine Gaul or Italian Gaul, cross the net, the small stream of the Rubicon, and enter with his army into Italy proper, thereby violating the law and beginning a civil war. It gives us our expression 
to cross the Rubicon. Caesar's timing was perfect. Italy was unprepared for an invasion. He first captured Arminium, modern-day Rimini, without resistance, and three northern towns soon followed. News of his incursion reached Rome by January 17th, leading Pompey to formally recognize a civil war and flee Italy with all the senators and his supporters. In 48 BC, Caesar was joined by Mark Antony and decisively defeated Pompey at the Battle of Pharsalus. Pompey fled to Egypt, where upon arrival he was assassinated. After several campaigns and a final victory at the Battle of Munda in 45 BC, Caesar returned to Rome. In 44 BC, Caesar was officially named Dictator Perpetuo, or Dictator for Life. After assuming control of the government in 49 BC, Caesar began dramatic social, political, and economic reforms. Among these changes was the creation of the Julian calendar in 46 BC, which was the predominant calendar of the Roman Empire and most of the Western world for 1600 years before Pope Gregory made a minor modification to it and gave rise to the modern Gregorian calendar. Caesar also contributed the names of many months, including April, November, October, September, and July, which was named after him. Additionally, he extended citizenship to far regions of the Roman Republic like Gaul, initiated land reform and support for veterans, and centralized the bureaucracy of the Republic. He also supported Cleopatra's claim to the throne in 47 BC, inciting an uprising of the supporters of the current pharaoh, Ptolemy XIII. After Ptolemy was defeated, Caesar appointed Cleopatra to co-rule with her younger brother, Ptolemy XIV. Without Caesar's political and war support, Cleopatra may never have become the cultural and historical icon she is today. However, his reign did not last long. His populist and authoritarian reform angered elites, including the Pompeian senators Brutus and Cassius, who began to conspire against him. On the Ides of March, during a meeting of the Senate in Rome, Caesar was stabbed 23 times by the senators. Despite his untimely assassination, Caesar's legacy did not end there. Caesar's nephew Octavian formed a second triumvirate to avenge Caesar's death and begin the year-long liberator civil war to crush Caesar's murderers. Octavian emerged victorious, becoming the first emperor of Rome. He was given the title of Augustus and reigned for over 40 years. The Roman Empire remained standing for approximately 1,000 years, influencing not only modern European culture but also the entire world. The empire gave rise to the Romance languages, Portuguese, Romanian, French, Spanish, and Italian, which are spoken by over 900 million people. It has also led to the modern alphabet and the emergence of Christianity as a prominent worldwide religion. Traces of Roman frescoes can be seen in similar murals in restaurants, banks, and other buildings. The Roman Empire's effects can be found in modern architecture, both in terms of design, domes, pillars, and arches, and in material, bricks, tiles, and concrete. In terms of politics and government, the Roman Empire influenced the idea of the U.S. Senate, checks and balances, vetoes, and an emphasis on citizenship. Modern law codes in European countries like France and Italy are based in part on ancient Roman laws, which covered many features of daily life. Examples of ancient Roman science and engineering still exist today in the form of aqueducts, roads, bridges, and military weapons. By performing his daring crossing, Caesar cemented himself in history as a talented political and military leader. His name inspired the military titles of the German Kaiser and Russian Tsar. In fact, the phrase, crossing the Rubicon, has become a modern idiom for passing the point of no return. All of these aspects of modern society may never have been achieved without Caesar's decisive turning point in history to ignite the creation of the Roman Empire.